What happens and where do we go when we die? A question that all humans have to try and answer sometime in their life. Some people will turn to religion or philosophy or their own personal opinions to help answer this question. And that's what we're going to try and answer in today's video. What happens and where do we go when we die? This iceberg will cover plenty of different theories that try and come up with a decent answer. And if you don't know how an iceberg works, well, it starts with commonly known things and theories such as heaven and hell and more obscure facts and theories towards the bottom such as am I real? Yeah, this video is definitely going to cover some deep and existential questions, but I'm excited to cover it. So let's get into it with the life and death iceberg explained. And actually, before we get into the video, consider subscribing to the channel. We are almost to 100,000 subscribers, and it'd be awesome to kick off the beginning of 2024 with that monumental goal. And it'd be awesome if you could help subscribe to the channel and help us reach that goal. It's free to subscribe, and you can always change your mind. Thanks. Tier 1. Nothing After Death the perspective that there is nothing after death is often associated with a materialistic or atheistic worldview. From this standpoint, death is seen as the end of conscious existence, and there is no continuation of consciousness or an afterlife at all. In this view, individuals are considered to be complex biological organisms, and consciousness arises from the functioning of the brain. When the body dies, the biological processes cease, and with them, consciousness ceases as well. According to this perspective, there is no personal awareness or experience after death. This viewpoint is aligned with certain scientific and philosophical perspectives that focus on the observable and measurable aspects of existence. It emphasizes the finite nature of individual life and consciousness within the framework of the physical world. Everything is real. The statement, everything is real, can be interpreted in different ways depending on the context. In a broad philosophical sense, it might be a claim about the objective reality of existence, suggesting that everything that exists is real in some fundamental sense. From a philosophical standpoint, discussions about reality often delve into questions about the nature of existence, perception, and consciousness. Some philosophical perspectives, such as realism, assert that there is an objective reality that exists independently of our perceptions or beliefs. Beliefs. Others, such as idealism, suggest that reality is dependent on consciousness and perception. In everyday language, saying everything is real could just be a statement about acknowledging the existence of various phenomena, experiences, or perspectives. It might imply an openness to accepting the diversity of human experiences and beliefs, but this was a pretty open-ended entry, so I just tried my best to cover all bases. Dreams are a fragment of the imagination. This entry captures a common perspective on the nature of dreams. Dreams are mental experiences that occur during sleep, typically involving a combination of thoughts, images, emotions, and sensations. The content of dreams can be diverse and often seems to be shaped by the individual's subconscious mind. When people describe dreams as a fragment of the imagination, they are highlighting the creative and often unpredictable nature of dreaming. Dreams can include different scenarios, events, or landscapes that may not follow the logical or physical rules of the waking world. This imaginative aspect of dreaming has led to various interpretations, both scientific and cultural. From a scientific standpoint, dreams are believed to be influenced by the brain's processing of memories, emotions, and experiences. And during the rapid eye movement, or REM, stage of sleep, which is associated with vivid dreaming, the brain engages in complex neural activity. This activity may involve the synthesis and the recombination of information stored in the brain contributing to the dream experience. So yeah, basically it is part of your imagination because some of them can be kind of wacky and weird dreams and uh, yeah. Life is how we live and perceive it which seems pretty obvious, but let's get into it. Life is how we live and perceive it. it, reflects a subjective and experiential understanding of life. It suggests that our individual experiences, perspectives, and interpretations shape the essence of life for each person. Life is a complex and multifaceted phenomenon, and how we live it is influenced by a myriad of factors, including our beliefs, our values, our relationships, our circumstances, and our personal history. So everyone's life is very different, even if you are a family member, they'll be completely different than yours, just because 
life is just totally different for everyone. Moreover, our perception of life, how we interpret and make meaning of our experiences, plays a crucial role in shaping our reality. This perspective aligns with the idea that there is no single, universally objective experience of life. Instead, each person's journey is unique, influenced by their thoughts, their own emotions, and the way they navigate the world. It recognizes the subjectivity inherent in human experience and emphasizes the importance of individual perspectives in defining the nature of life. The statement also implies a certain level of agency, suggesting that our actions, our choices, and our attributes contribute to the quality and meaning of our lives. In this sense, it highlights the role of personal responsibility and self-awareness in shaping our experience of life. Overall, you decide how well your life goes, and there isn't one definite meaning of life, I would say, coming from this, there isn't one meaning of life because everyone's life is so different, where you and someone else, you walk by on the street, completely different, you would never know and could never have the same opinions and beliefs. So you really just make life how you experience it. All right, now on to tier two, starting off with judgment day. Judgment Day is a term often associated with religious beliefs, referring to a future time when a divine entity or power is believed to judge and evaluate the actions and moral conduct of individuals and what they did during their lives. The concept is prevalent in multiple religious traditions, each with its own interpretation. In Christianity, for example, Judgment Day is often linked to the second coming of Christ. It is a time when the dead are resurrected, and both the living and the resurrected are judged based on their deeds. The righteousness are rewarded with eternal life, while the wicked face punishment. Similarly, in Islam, the concept is known as Day of Resurrection. On this day, individuals are resurrected and their deeds are weighed to determine their fate in the afterlife. Other religious and cultural traditions also have variations of a judgment day or a time of cosmic reckoning, where individuals are held accountable for their actions during their earthly lives. Karma is an existing concept. Karma, a concept originating from various religious and philosophical traditions, particularly in Indian religions like Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, and Sikhism, is deeply ingrained in the idea that actions do have consequences. The term itself is derived from the Sankhist word of action or deed. Central to the concept is the law of cause and effect, where the repercussions of one's actions, whether positive or negative, are believed to influence an individual in their current life or their future lives. Moral accountability is a crucial component of this, with positive actions leading to positive consequences, which is positive karma, and negative actions resulting in unfavorable outcomes, otherwise known as negative karma often associated with the belief in reincarnation. Karma posits that the accumulated consequences of actions shape an individual circumstances in successive lives. Some traditions emphasize the ultimate goal of breaking free from this cycle, known as samsara, through the accumulation of positive karma and the attainment of spiritual enlightenment. Beyond its religious roots, the concept of karma has permeated popular culture and discourse, often used colloquially to express the broader idea that one's actions will have repercussions, whether immediate or delayed. Hell and Heaven The concepts of hell and heaven are deeply rooted in various religious and cultural traditions, each offering its own interpretation of an afterlife or spiritual realm. In many branches of Christianity, hell is often depicted as a place of eternal punishment or separation from God for those who have committed grave sins or rejected divine salvation. Conversely, heaven is portrayed as a realm of eternal bliss in communion with God for those who have lived righteous lives and accepted the teachings of their faith. In Islam, hell is described as a place of punishment for those who have rejected the message of Islam or committed severe sins, while heaven is a place of reward and pleasure for the righteous believers. In Hinduism, the afterlife is complex and diverse, with the concept of reincarnation playing a significant role. The idea of hell is represented by various various realms of suffering in different Hindu areas. While heaven is often associated with positive states of existence or union with the divine, Buddhism, which shares some cultural and philosophical roots with Hinduism, generally does not possess a permanent hell or permanent heaven. Instead, it emphasizes the cycle of birth, the cycle of death, and rebirth, and seeks liberation from this cycle through enlightenment or nirvana. 
Other religions and belief systems also have their own interpretations of an afterlife, often with distinctive notions of reward and punishment. Reincarnation as an Animal the concept of reincarnation or the rebirth of the soul in a new form after death includes the idea that individuals can be reborn as animals. Reincarnation is a central tenet in various different religions and philosophical traditions, particularly in Eastern religions such as Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, and some forms of Sikhism. In Hinduism, the belief in reincarnation is linked to the concept of samsara, the cycle of birth, death, and rebirth. The type of life form one is reborn into is thought to be influenced by karma like we talked about earlier the accumulated consequences of one's actions in previous lives. Reincarnation as an animal is considered a lower form of existence, often associated with negative karma resulting from past misdeeds. In Buddhism, which shares some philosophical roots with Hinduism, the cycle of rebirth is also a central concept. The specific form one takes in the next life is determined by karma. While Buddhism does not necessarily emphasize reincarnation as a linear progression through different life forms, being reborn as an animal is seen as a possibility based on one's actions and their karma. Tier 3 We live in a simulation. The idea that we live in a simulation is a concept that has gained attention in both philosophical and scientific discussions as well as in popular culture. This hypothesis suggests that the reality we perceive is not the ultimate or primary reality, but rather a simulated or artificial construct. So it's just saying everything around us is fake. In philosophical terms, the simulation hypothesis raises questions about the nature of consciousness, perception, and existence. Some argue that if we are living in a simulation, our experiences and perceptions might be artificially generated, and what we consider reality might just be a simulated construct. From a scientific perspective, the simulation hypothesis has been discussed in the context of advancements in technology and computer simulations. The argument suggests that if a technologically advanced civilization were capable of creating realistic simulations, it might create artificial worlds with conscious beings, similar to our own existence. Dreams are an attempt to make a wish come true. The idea that dreams are an attempt to make a wish come true is an interpretation that aligns with certain psychological and cultural perspectives. In psychology, dreams have been studied for their potential to reveal unconscious thoughts, desires, and emotions. Sibling Fruit, a prominent figure in psychoanalysts, proposed that dreams could serve as a means of wish fulfillment, allowing individuals to experience and express unfulfilled desires in a symbolic or disguised form during sleep. According to Fruit's theory, dreams often contain latent content, meaning hidden means and desires, that are expressed through manifest content, the literal elements of the dream. In this view, dreams provide an outlet for the mind to process and fulfill wishes that may be suppressed or unattainable in waking life. Culturally, various societies throughout history have ascribed symbolic and prophetic meanings to dreams. In some traditions, Dreams are seen as a channel for communication with the divine or as a way to receive guidance about our future. The interpretation of dreams as wish fulfillment can be influenced by cultural beliefs and personal experiences. While Freud's theories on dream analysis have been influential, it's important to note that dream interpretation is a complex and subjective field that is still under mass study. Life is an examination. The metaphorical notion that life is an examination draws parallels between the challenges of existence and the trials presented by examinations. This analogy suggests that, like exams, life possesses various tests that demand resilience, problem solving, and adaptability. In both scenarios, preparation and learning are integral. Individuals study for exams to demonstrate knowledge, and in life, people accumulate experiences, skills, and wisdom for navigating its complexities. The outcomes of examinations reflect an individual's understanding of a subject, while life experiences contribute to personal growth, character development, and the formation of one's identity. Just as individuals reflect on their exam performance, life encourages self-reflection, evaluation of choices, and continuous personal development. It's important to recognize, however, that this metaphor is one among many ways to conceptualize life, and diverse perspectives exist based on cultural, 
philosophical, and individual beliefs. Different viewpoints may emphasize joy, love, connection, or spiritual fulfillment as central to the purpose and the nature of life. Reborn as another person the concept of being reborn as another person is commonly associated with the idea of reincarnation. Reincarnation is the belief found in several religious and philosophical traditions such as Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, and some forms of Sikhism. The fundamental premise is that after death, an individual soul or consciousness is reborn into a new body. In the context of being reborn as another person, the specific circumstances of the new life are thought to be influenced by the individual's actions and deeds in their previous life. So this one's pretty similar to being reborn as an animal, which we talked about a few entries ago. And the concept is often tied to the idea of karma, which we also talked about, which is also accumulated moral and ethical consequences of one's actions. And positive actions are believed to lead to a more favorable rebirth, while negative actions may result in a less desirable one. Different belief systems provide varying explanations for the process of reincarnation, including the notion of a cycle of birth, death, and rebirth. The ultimate goal of some traditions is to break free from the cycle and attain spiritual liberation or enlightenment. Tier 4 Deja Vu is a memory retained in the past life. The concept I mentioned, linking deja vu to a memory retained in the past life, aligns with the metaphysical or spiritual interpretation. Deja vu refers to the feeling that one has experienced a current situation before, even though it is technically happening for the first time. While deja vu is a well-documented psychological phenomenon, various interpretations exist regarding its origin. In the context I mentioned, the idea of past lives and reincarnation suggests that deja vu experience could be a fleeting recollection of a similar event or circumstance from a previous lifetime you experienced. According to beliefs in reincarnation, individuals carry memories or imprints from past lives into their current existence. You remain conscious after death. The question of whether consciousness persists after death is a deeply philosophical one and, to date, scientifically unverified topic. From a scientific perspective, consciousness is understood as a product of the brain's complex neural activity. While the brain ceases to function, as in the case in death, there is currently no empirical evidence supporting the continuation of consciousness in any recognizable form. However, various religious, spiritual, and philosophical traditions propose diverse perspectives on the nature of consciousness after death. In some religious perspectives, an afterlife is described where the soul or consciousness continues to exist in some manner, potentially experiencing rewards or consequences based on one's actions in life. Consciousness and dreams are two real universes. The metaphorical statement that consciousness and dreams are two real universes conveys a philosophical perspective on the profound and intricate nature of human experience. When characterizing consciousness as a universe, the metaphor likely captures the vastness and complexity of our inner world, encompassing thoughts, perceptions, emotions, and self-awareness. Each individual's consciousness forms a unique and intricate realm, shaping their subjective reality. Similarly, framing dreams as a universe suggests the immersive and unpredictable nature of the dream realm during sleep. Dreams unfold with vivid experiences, emotions, and narratives, creating a separate and dynamic, quote, universe within the mind. While these metaphors evoke the richness of human cognition in the dream state, it's crucial to recognize that, scientifically, the term universe typically refers to the entirety of space, time, matter, and energy instead of our consciousness. And philosophically, however, these metaphors invite contemplation on the profound and subjective dimensions of consciousness and dreaming. Tier 5. The life you live is a dream, and dreams are reality. The statement that the life you live is a dream and dreams are reality reflects a philosophical perspective that blurs the distinction between waking life and the experiences within dreams. This viewpoint challenges traditional notions of reality and suggests that both waking life and dreams are valid in significant aspects of human existence. Interpreting life as a dream implies a certain fluidity between the perceived boundaries of reality and imagination. 
It could suggest that the reality we experience is malleable, subjective, and potentially surreal as the scenarios encountered in dreams. This perspective aligns with certain philosophical and spiritual traditions that explore the nature of perception, consciousness, and the self. Additionally, asserting that dreams are reality challenges the conventionally hierarchy that often places waking life as the primary, concrete reality. Instead, it suggests that the experiences and insights gained in our dreams have a legitimacy and reality of their own. This philosophical stance resonates with themes found in various mystical and introspective traditions that emphasize the interconnectedness of different states of consciousness and challenge the rigid distinctions between the dream world and waking reality. Ultimately, interpretations of such statements are highly personal and can vary based on individual beliefs, cultural influences, and philosophical orientations. Purgatory Purgatory is a concept found in certain Christian theological traditions, particularly within Roman Catholicism. It is not universally accepted across all Christian denominations, but in Catholic theology, purgatory is viewed as a state or condition of temporary punishment or purification of souls who have died in a state of grace but still need to be purified before entering into the fullness of heaven. The idea is that individuals in purgatory have not committed mortal sins that would lead to damnation but they have not yet completely been cleansed of venial sins or the temporal effects of sins. The concept of purgatory is rooted in the belief in God's mercy and the understanding that, even though sins are forgiven, there may still need to be a process for purification before entering the divine presence of heaven. It is not a second chance for salvation, but rather a state of preparation for the ultimate union with God in heaven. Although other Christian denominations such as Protestantism generally do not recognize the concept of purgatory, the understanding of the afterlife including concepts like heaven, hell, and purgatory can vary widely among different Christian traditions, reflecting diverse theological perspectives and interpretations of scripture. We are a spectator of a body we can't control. The statement, we are spectators of a body we can't control, captures a sense of detachment or observation from the actions and function of one's own body. This perspective aligns with certain philosophical and introspective ideas about the nature of self, consciousness, and the mind-body relationship. In many philosophical traditions, questions about the self and consciousness are often explored, and the experience of observing one's own body and actions raises complex inquiries. This sentiment is reminiscent of the philosophical concept of dualism, which possesses a separation between the mind and the consciousness and the body. From a psychological standpoint, this feeling of being a spectator to one's own body might also resonate with experiences of disassociation or depersonalization, where individuals feel detached from their own physical and mental processes, and just kind of watching their own body. On the other hand, some spiritual and contemplative traditions emphasize mindfulness and self-awareness as a means of gaining greater control or understanding of one's thoughts and actions. Tier 6. Lucid dreams are your alternate life. The statement that lucid dreams are an alternate life reflects a perspective that views that dream state as a significant and immersive realm with a reality of its own. Lucid dreaming refers to a state in which the dreamer becomes aware that they are dreaming and may gain some degree of control over their dream environment and narrative. In the context of considering lucid dreams as an alternate life, individuals who experience lucid dreams might perceive these states of consciousness as a distinct and meaningful aspect of their overall existence. In lucid dreams, people can engage in activities, explore environments, and interact with characters that feel vividly real, and in some cases, entirely different from waking life. Some individuals who practice lucid dreaming or study the phenomenon emphasize the potential for personal growth, creativity, and self-exploration within the dream state. Lucid dreams may provide a unique space for individuals to confront fears, experiment with new ideas, or tap into their subconscious mind. While the concept of lucid dreams as an alternate life is subjective and falls within the realm of personal experience, it is kind of possible that it's an alternate life in your own mind to a sense. Pain is not real and only an illusionary manifestation. 
this statement is rooted in certain philosophical, spiritual, and psychological perspectives rather than mainstream scientific consensus. From a philosophical standpoint, there is an emphasis on the mind-body connection, suggesting that mental states can influence the experience of sensations, including pain. This perspective aligns with certain mindfulness and meditative traditions, which propose that altering one's mental focus and awareness can impact the perception of pain. Moreover, in the realm of pain science, it is acknowledged that psychological factors play a role in shaping the experience of pain. Stress, anxiety, and expectations can modulate how the brain processes and interprets sensory signals related to potential or actual tissue damage. The complex nature of pain involves both sensory and emotional components, and individuals may experience pain differently based on the psychological and emotional states. However, it is essential to recognize that the brain has a biological and psychological basis. Noiseptive signals indicating potential harm or damage are crucial elements of the body's protective mechanisms. So basically, this entry isn't really true because you have nerves and you will just, you know, feel pain, but it's possible that your mind will make the pain worse than it is, or at least that's the way I've kind of deciphered this, but I don't know. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Tier 7. And one of my favorite on this list, nobody on this earth is alive. The entire world is a hallucination. The statement that nobody on this earth is alive in the entire world is a hallucination reflects a perspective that finds resonance in certain philosophical and existential ideas. One philosophical concept that aligns with this viewpoint is solipsism, which posits that individual consciousness is the only certainty. In the external world and other minds may be just perspectives and projections of one's own subjective experience. This extreme form of subjectivity challenges conventional notions of shared reality. Existential philosophy, notably associated with thinkers like Jean-Paul Sartre, delves into the nature of existence and individual experience. Existentialism emphasizes personal responsibility and freedom, but not only necessarily conclude that the external world is an illusion. The term hallucination typically refers to the perception of something not present, so in this case, the entire world would be a hallucination and not real, obviously. And so basically, in conclusion, solipsism is the philosophical stance on this, so I would love to make even a whole video on solipsism, so let me know what you think down in the comments, but one of the more interesting entries on this list, I would say. Eternal Void After Death The concept of an eternal void after death is a viewpoint often associated with certain existential and nihilistic perspectives. It suggests that a post-death state characterized by nothingness, a lack of consciousness, and an absence of any form of experience, this perspective is not aligned with religious beliefs in an afterlife, reincarnation, or the continuation of consciousness beyond death. Existential nihilism, for example, posits that life lacks inherent meaning or purpose and death represents a state of non-being. From this standpoint, the idea of an eternal void after death reflects a philosophical conclusion that there is no transcendental significance to an individual's existence because once you die, you're just into an eternal void and nothing is after death. All right, now onto the final tier of the iceberg, tier eight, am I real. The question, am I real, is a profound and philosophical inquiry that has been explored by thinkers throughout history. It touches upon fundamental questions about existence, consciousness, and the nature of your and I's reality. In a philosophical concept, this question can be linked to the concept of solipsism, which we talked about earlier, which is the idea that only one's own mind is sure to exist, and there's no way to prove other people's lives. Solipsism suggests that everything else, including other people in the external world, could be products of one's own consciousness or imagination. While solipsism is an interesting thought experiment, it is not widely accepted as a definitive explanation of reality. From a psychological perspective, questioning one's reality might also be associated with experiences like depersonalization or derealization, where individuals feel detached from themselves or their surroundings and not feel real. These experiences can be associated with various conditions, including stress, anxiety, or certain mental health disorders. In everyday life, the assumption is that the external world and other people are real entities, and our interactions with them are based on shared experiences. However, the ultimate nature of reality remains a complex and debated topic in philosophy, physics, and other fields. 
While the question, am I real, doesn't have a straightforward answer, it's a thought-provoking inquiry that delves into the mysterious of consciousness, self-awareness, and the nature of our existence. Exploring this question may lead to deeper understanding of one's own perspectives on reality and the subjective nature of human experience. All right. Wow. That was a pretty deep and existential provoking iceberg. I hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed making it and just writing the script and stuff like that. Very interesting to me. I love these type of videos and these type of topics like the existential ones, the philosophy ones. They're just really interested to me. And this was a shorter video, but it's all right. I just wanted to cover this anyways. And uh, I really hope you enjoyed. And if you're still watching, consider subscribing to the channel. We're almost to 100,000 and 2024 baby we're in it and big things coming for the channel in 2024 this is my first start of a new year on youtube because last year was my first year but this will be my first starting from the beginning full year on youtube so i'm really excited to start off the year strong and with a bunch of fun videos all throughout the year and thank you guys for watching it means the world and until next time see ya